Welcome along once again to the uh, Cardiff City phone-in. There's only two people on, on the screen at the moment, but we'll be joined by others uh, in the course of the show. However, the bonuses were both called Steve. So there we go. You know, it's, it's got to be a good thing. And Steve Thomas is resplendent in his whale shirt tonight, which apparently is from 1991. So tell us about the uh, the heritage of that shirt. No, it's, just, it's just saying, Steve, that uh, this is a shirt I wore at the uh, game in 1991 where... Uh, we beat Germany, the whole of the Germany, not the West Germany that won the World Cup the previous year, uh, with Ian Rash scoring the goal at the old uh, National Stadium. I'd also say that um, it was uh, three days after my daughter was born, so I'll never forget the date. My daughter was born on the 2nd of June, 91, and uh, this the game was on the uh, on the th on the 5th of June. So I was pleased that uh, my, my wife and my daughter stayed in hospital, so I was able to go to the game, and they came in the next day. So I, I do remember that that that, that week uh, very, 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 uh, very well. Very, very kind, very kind of them to be so considerate for you. Indeed, indeed yeah. um, we're going to talk about Cardiff City, obviously, in Wales. We've got loads to talk about. We'll be joined by other guests in a bit. But in terms of um, Wales, obviously, a massive match for Wales tomorrow. Yeah. You know, yeah. massive match, biggest one for, for some time. Yeah. You think about certain ones like the Bowden penalty and this kind of stuff, you know, yes. and the uh, Joe Jordan um, header. Yes. yes. <laughs> and th things like that over the years, you know, from, for, for such a small nation. Uh, yeah. It's quite amazing, really, that we've got we've got any anywhere near it. Um, how big a match is this in your eyes for, for, for Wales tomorrow? How significant think, is it? I think, I think it's massive. Um, it, well, well, one of the biggest um, for, well, it, makes, it sounds, sounds ridiculous to say it's one of the biggest for like some time, but I think there's there's a lot, a lot on this game from the point of view of where we go forward from this because I think the players in the squad now would benefit hugely from, from going to the Euros in Germany. Um, look look how we, we benefited from the, the push on we got from France. Uh, we, we, this will be our third consecutive uh, Euros to be qualified for. Um, we're in a group we can get out of, I think. Not not the easiest group, not the not the not the worst group, but um, I think it's uh, I think it, it, it's, it's a good opportunity. Um, though it's, it's stating the obvious again to say that uh, Poland are going to be a completely different proposition tomorrow night, uh, as well as faced last last week. I think uh, we did give Finland a few good positions on occasions, um, and uh, I think a more clinical side would have taken better advantage of it. I'm I'm confident, but not overconfident. Um, I very much hope we can do it, and I very much hope we can have a presence in in, in Germany next year. So there's two. I mean, two players that spring to mind. Obviously, with Cardiff City connections, um, nice to see Ruben Carwell getting back in the squad, um, and hopefully he'll get some game time. But I suppose the one we're both thinking about for a number of different reasons really is Aaron Ramsey. Yes, I think we missed we missed the uh, the way he connects play between the defence and the and, and the and the and the forward line. Uh, with all due respect to our forwards, I think we got be better players for him to play 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 the balls too. We've got, got pace in in James and uh, Brennan Johnson uh, on, on the side. Um I think I think he, he would he would make a tremendous difference. Um I think we can expect a, a, a physical game against the Poles tomorrow night. He says again stating the obvious, uh, stating the old, old cliche. Um Lewandowski is still a quality player but he's obviously not as young as he used to be but he's absolutely world class. Yeah. Um I think it's it's going to be a tough game. I I'd take any sort of victory. I'd take a late night tomorrow after um after penalties and, and extra time. I hope we can do it in normal time, but I think it's going to be a far, far more close game. And I fear what happens if we were to go behind tomorrow. I hope we don't go behind tomorrow. I hope we can start off the game taking it to, to them as we did against uh, the, the Finns last week. And we can we can get ahead uh, in, in the early stages of the game. And then it can be them chasing the game and us, us picking them off, I hope. Did, did you get to the game last week, Steve? I didn't, unfortunately. It's midweek again, unfortunately. Oh, you can't, you can't get there now. I'm just wondering, um, Nigel might have gone. Let's see if Nigel's just, just coming in there. Hello, yeah, Nigel. Yeah. Hello, boys. Yeah, I was there. How are you? Hi, Steve. Oh, good I'm, to see I'm you. Fine, thanks. Yeah, good to see you, Nigel. <laughs> yeah, two Steves, yeah. Um, Nigel, <laughs> what, you, you're at the game, the, the Finland game yeah. then, yeah? So was there any kind of, I don't know, maybe I'm just being naive and wistful here. Was there any kind of... Uh, banter or sort of any any sign of any kind of connection or goodwill with the Finnish fans, or was it just another bunch of away fans? And there you go. No, I I thought their support was uh, fantastic. They they had a much bigger support than I I thought they were going to be bring. They didn't quite fill the the away end as we know it, but um, they were, they were quite a sight. They were all you know um, they had huge flags. So a number of times throughout the game, you could see them holding up the flags and. You hear them a couple of times, but to be honest, um, I was at the opposite end of the virtually diagonally opposite where they were, so I didn't hear too much of them because 
all the noise was coming from the Welsh fans on the night. We did um, have a period in the first half, which I, I'm sure if you were there, you saw it, where uh, they probably did have a lot more possession and we didn't close them down yeah, quickly yeah. enough in midfield. And it did feel a little bit uncomfortable. Um, but once we got the second goal, and then we let, obviously we let them back into the game just before the interval. So, uh, But really, when they got the third goal straight after the restart, you did feel that there was no way they were going to uh cause us that many problems they did have one really good wing and uh left wing yeah was, wasn't he good wasn't he good yeah and, uh, um the first half he was playing in front of me he was directly in front of me and he really did give connor roberts a lot of trouble but i was thinking i'd love to see him down at city i thought exactly <laughs> the same thing i can't i was just looking for his name now i thought exactly the same thing i, I just can't remember yeah, I did look him at. He plays for the Finnish team. He's not playing um, top level football, but I think before that game, he'd scored four in the previous six internationals for Finland. So um, he definitely is one to watch. And um, I, I'm assuming Mr. Pullet was there. So uh, I wondered if it registered anything with him. <laughs> well, on uh, on uh, Radio Wales, they said, Oh, we're joined by a celebrity. And they were talking about Graham Conklin being there, you know. So uh, I imagine, <laughs> I imagine if he was there, then I would imagine also that. Um, uh, the 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 Ar Ar was there. Um, yeah, sure. Yeah, that, that, that 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 left winger, I like I like the look of at all. What what do you think about um, Ruben? You know, score for the under twenty ones um, against was Lithuania. I think he's back. He's yeah, back. Yeah, scored and that, that assist for the uh, the Kumas goal. The Kumas finish was outstanding as well, wasn't it? But um, let's get him back. Awesome. City. Let's have Kumas yeah. back. There we go. The magic number yeah. seven. Now, do you remember that? Let's bring back the yeah. number seven. I saw. Um, a friend of mine went out to uh, Turkey last night and the Welsh under 21 team were on the same flight as him. So he was sending pictures at Bristol Airport with the Welsh under 21. I said, have a way with Kumas, get into Cypher City. <laughs> so I think they're playing a friendly in Morocco or something, they're, but they're playing in Turkey, I understand. So uh, they, were, they were flying out to Turkey last night. If he's half as good as his dad, he's got to be worth having, hasn't he? Do you remember when he, he came on a sub his first game against Leeds? I mean, one yes. day down at half time, and straight away, he was really fantastic. Yeah, he, he was one of those players, Steve. And then and, and, and last night, you know, I'm sure, and you, Steve, I must have ideas. Um, he's one of those players. Then there's not really what? that many. There's not really that many of them, really. Uh, I mean, the Bennetts when they were around, particularly Dave. You know, Dave Bennett. He's one of those players that when he got the ball, uh, the whole the whole stadium lifted. You know. He was, he, yeah, he was just fantastic to watch. He had a real presence about him, didn't he? Absolutely, absolutely. Some of the goals he scored were fantastic. Do you remember there was that home game against Ipswich on a Monday night? I think it was live on Sky when um, we, we were 1-0 up and Michael Ricketts missed a penalty after Ipswich had a player sent off and Ipswich equalised. And in the last couple of minutes, he, he scored. He actually fell over in the opposition penalty area, got up and curled the shot perfectly into the top corner past the keeper. Cue mayhem. Lots of people jumping around madly, as, as, as we always do. But yeah. Um, I think about the uh, the goal. He scored a free kick against Doncaster Rovers away, perfect into the top corner. Um, yeah, so when he got the when he gets the ball and he drive and he drove forward, um, he'd be he'd be excellent. And obviously, uh, the younger Kumas is at um, is at Liverpool. We have had a number of players on loan from Liverpool before. Uh, yeah. Perhaps let the Panthers look to get him, get him some proper first team football next season at Cardiff City. Well, it's only just a, it's only just across the border, isn't it? You know, it's only uh, and the, the the other one, I suppose. Uh, Nigel, I don't know whether where he's playing. I think it's non-league. It's uh, young Savage. He looks like you know, fifteen times the player a, his dad ever was. Yeah, I think he's at Reading um, on loan. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he's a prospect. Yeah, definitely different player to his old man, but yeah, definitely got a talent. And then if you look at Liverpool the other day when they were playing in that cup match and they, they cheekily put the kids out and they still won. Um, you know, they've got yeah. so many fantastic youngsters. I know they've got some injury problems at the moment, but there must be quite a lot of those youngsters. And there is, you know, it's only just across the way from, you know, North Wales is just, just down the road. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you wonder if if there actually would be any mileage at all in getting somebody like young Kumas. Well, he's, only, what, he's a kid, isn't he? He's like 18 or something. Yeah, well... I think, in fairness, Cardiff have done reasonably well on loans uh, the last year or two, and they, they do seem to look at these young prospects. But, yeah, it would be nice to see a couple of these Welsh loans. And I suppose you look at Liverpool and you go, oh, aren't they good, all their young players? But then you realise how they go and rip them off from, like, Cardiff Academy, as we saw again last week with the yeah, player yeah. we lost to Man City. So you think, have they really got great academies, or do they just manage to pull away the best of what's available everywhere? And I think it's probably a bit of both. 
Yeah, because they can, they can they can do that, can't they? Because if we, I think it was quarter of a million that lad went for from Cardiff. Yeah. You know, which is which is in the grand scheme of things, if we think look to the future, is absolutely nothing. But in the short term, it's kind of a gamble, really, because you don't know what the kid's going to become. So I suppose you can you can take the money, but then they end up with like you know two hundred and thirty five players in their squad. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we saw it. What, what Charlie Crew went to Leeds, haven't we? There's there's another player went to Leeds. We lost. Um, I suppose the one. The, the men was Matondo. They had no time at Man City, but they sold it for twelve million, and they took him from from us of two hundred thousand, I think. And I'm not even sure we had a sell-on clause for him, so um, no. we we missed out on. You know, they cashed in on that, and that's what they can do. These clubs, Chelsea, of course, are what's notorious for buying players from everywhere Everton? and just selling them on. Was the Everton who illegally approached him, Rabbi Matondo, when he was at Cardiff? Yes, it was. You're right, Steve. So Garan Cole's talking about that, you know, how it shouldn't be allowed. But I kind of remember the ins and outs of it, Nigel. You might remember what's 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 the deal with this, you know, if if you've got a kid and a bigger club comes in, you kind of you're kind of uh, over a barrel, aren't you? Yeah, I don't understand it all. I, I know Gavin at the Academy has basically said they're pretty helpless. I mean, I think it's something to do with the grade of academy as well, that part of a grade B and yeah, players yeah. can't be taken by grade A academies. And I think if we went back to the Premier League, then they would upgrade to Grade A. It's a lot more investment it involves. But um, while we're at Grade B, I think that just means that we're at the hands of Premier League clubs. But, you know, the same applies to most of the Championship clubs. I suppose the the issue for Cardiff is, you know, we, if we breed, uh, you know, we bring through this young talent in the academy, we need to give them a, a gateway to the first team. And we do yes. block that for whatever reasons. And I was reading yeah. last night, Bristol City, uh, you know, they're notorious for bringing through academy players. And I think 33% of the playing time this season have been players that they've brought, brought through their academy. We can't say that at all. Ruben gets games for us, but no one else does. No, he didn't seem, uh, Steve, I, I might be wrong, but um, just just before the show tonight, hoping to be joined by David Collins. He's obviously been um, doing football journalism all over the place. He's coming in in a bit. But he sent me, he's been asked to write a story for Sunderland, uh, for the Sunderland uh, fan base for, for, you know, it's a preview for the match. And uh, one of the questions was was about, like, you know, the transfer window and who we brought through, et cetera, et cetera. And I think I think the point that, that Nigel is make, making there is a good one about about bringing bringing youngsters through. If you think about players like you know at the moment Joel Bagan and more so Isaac Davis yeah. out there on loan, I think he scored eight goals now for a team towards the bottom of the division. Yeah. And according whether it's his agent putting the word out there, I don't know, but uh, saying you know all, all these big bigger clubs across across Europe are, are chasing him. Um, it doesn't seem to be something that we. Maybe we can't, but we don't seem to do very well, Steve. We don't. We don't. I understand Isaac's got another um, another year, year on his contract yet, but I think we'll have to see what happens on that. But yeah, I, I read some of the um, some of the names of, of the clubs that are allegedly interested in Isaac, led by uh, AS Monaco. So um, I think there's the doesn't Dalman have a place there? Really, <laughs> <laughs> really coincidental, Steve. I'm sure. But yeah, I think, I think no, no, we, we haven't been a, a, any good, and I, I don't know uh, what why that is. Um, the, 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 I think when when Neil Warnock was at the club, they didn't seem to be showing that much interest in in the academy. He wasn't interested. I don't think. Yeah. Going to come through then. Um, I also think it's um it, it's good good for. I mentioned last time I was on. I think about about the fact that uh, Ernie went out on loan to uh, Green at Morton and came back a much yeah. better player. Um, yeah. I hope that the same might happen with Isaac Davis because we're missing somebody, obviously, particularly playing against some of the better teams. Remember the, the particularly good game he had against Leeds in the FA Cup last season? Because he did look great, didn't he? Play out, and he was a very good. He was very good at pressing, which yeah. you don't seem to have players to, to 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 perform that function at the moment. So I hope that he can come through. But go back to Joel Began. I know you're a big big fan of this, Steve. Yeah. Um, it seems difficult to see what he's done. What he's done wrong because when he did play two or three seasons ago, he did seem to do a good job. I think he didn't score. Did he score in three consecutive games at one point? So uh, he did. Yeah, I, I called yeah, him. I called him Goldbagan for a while, but it wasn't very funny, <laughs> so I stopped doing it. We, we could just. <laughs> yeah. It's difficult to see. I mean, we, we tend to bring through the odd gem. Whereas, yeah. But if we pick up on Nigel's point earlier as well. Yeah. If Liverpool are literally vacuuming up the, the the talent from right around the world, I mean, going back to Rabi Matondo. I said, didn't Everton offer to buy his parents a house in the northwest to get yeah. around the, get around the yeah. local residency? And we might obviously, I don't know about our finances, but but teams lower down surely can't compete with that. 
No, uh, David Collins has joined us now. Sorry, David, but if there was an issue with the, the time, thanks for coming in. Uh, I do, do apologise. I simply thought it was... No, that's all right. Long. That's all right. Uh, um, I, I wanted I, to ask you, Dave... I've broken, I've, I've broken every rule Mark Drake that was ever uh, introduced to, uh, yeah. to land on in time. Uh, well, don't, we, we, we didn't hear that bit, so that's all right. <laughs> so, 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 David, just to ask you, because I know you, you, know, you cover... Uh, you're a football journalist. You cover a lot of games. You see a lot of the youngsters' matches. Um, I don't know whether you covered the Wales under twenty one recently. Did you? Uh, yes, I did. I I covered uh, it's an unusual fixture: Wales under twenty one versus Liechtenstein under twenty three um, at Romney Parade, and the Colwell brothers uh, both uh, appeared for Wales, and I suppose I was paying particular attention to them, but they were head and shoulders better than the others. Ruben Cobble in particular, he, he's so composed. On he's the physically board. head and shoulders, isn't he? Well, literally, he's massive. Yeah, he's huge. I wish yeah. I'd buy him a bigger pair of shorts, though. But uh, <laughs> he, he, he's, he, 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 he uses class, and his brother was, was um, uh, you know, not far behind him. Uh, and another game I covered uh, in the press box, it wasn't an under-21 game, but it was... Uh, Wales against Gibraltar, and there mm. was a lot of youngsters playing in that game. Mm. And you were talking there about, you know, lone players and giving players a chance. You know, Charlie Savage caught the eye in that game. Regan Poole did very well. Now the lad Kumas coming through at Liverpool. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a wealth of talent uh, coming through for Wales. One name I, I would throw into that mix about uh, good Cardiff City youngsters over the last couple of years was uh, Ellie King. He, yeah, he, yeah. He struck me as being quite composed in in the in the middle of the park, you know. And maybe if if we have, let's say, eight meaningless games between now and the end of the season, which I would suggest suggest we do, then maybe the likes of um, you know Kean Ashford, the younger Colwell, is it Joel Colwell? Joel, um, yeah, yeah, uh, and you know some of the other youngsters um, uh, might get an opportunity. I do hope so. I'm but just trying so to think, Dave. While it, while you're talking, I'm just trying to think. You you remember before me? What's the name of that young winger? Is it Kieran something? He's out on loan, on loan somewhere. Kieran Evans. Yeah, so Evans. Kieran Evans. Yeah. Then you got Ollie Denham is playing over for Sligo in Ireland. I think I think Jamie Kroll's yeah. out on on loan at the moment. And then we got Eli King. I can't remember where he's in Scotland. I think isn't he? And then then Ke uh, Kieran Ashford knocking on the door. Yeah. Um, what do you think, David? About what's what's your Gut feeling about um because I answered that thing you sent me through earlier about the Sunderland game for that that uh, coverage you were doing there. Um and I did see that, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, might be a few typos I did a bit of a hurry just before the show. But um uh, what do you think, you know, do we going back to what Nigel said, you might have missed it when you were coming in. Nigel was talking about um giving some players, I think it was other Nigel or Steve, giving some players a crack, giving them a bit of first team experience. Uh, and and then kind of bringing them into the mix a little bit more, whereas at the moment a lot of our promising youngsters don't even get anywhere near the first team, and they're already gone, you know, and they're already sold on. Yeah, that's been a problem over the last few years. As I say, you know, I'm going to go up, and we certainly don't look like we're going down. So now would be, you know, the, a, a relatively good chance to blood the likes of Ashford. Mm -hmm. But it goes back to the same old problem. We, you know, we could have plenty Ian Rush and Jimmy Greaves up front for us, but we don't, we're not creating the chances. So however good, you know, Earnshaw yeah. or Ash might be in that six-yard box, if we're not getting the ball, point. yes, I you buff, you're buffering a bit, David. If you excuse the phrase. Yeah. I think so. I was... Um... Well, he's waiting for him to come back. I was seeing on Twitter last night, I forgot the name, George Ellick, who runs the uh, Not The Top 20 podcast, covers the championship, and he does a lot of stuff on Radio 5 as well. He was talking about Ruben Colwell, and he said he can't believe how he doesn't start that many games for Cardiff. And if he was at Bristol or Blackburn, club like that, he'd probably be on 70-odd appearances instead of, I think he's only ever started 30 games for Cardiff so far. Well, um, um, yeah, I think that's the way to go now. I think they've got to start Rubin every game. So, Let's get rid of Josh, Josh Bowler because 
he's had enough opportunities. Poor he's not going to be here next season. But yeah. he's not going to be here next season, is he? There's no way they're going to um, take him on. Um, so I think they they have got to look at um, Joel Carwell. Start Rubin. Let's have Rubin for an hour and, and Aaron Ramsey for thirty minutes. You know, well and get him back. Yeah. In, get him back into it. That's the point, Nigel. I was going to ask you about because you yeah. know, we, um, you know, in the one of the things that David, uh, that people in Sunderland were asking about was uh, about the transfer window and how we did in it. And yeah. my, my answer was really, we, you know, numerically we did quite well. Yes, but in terms of quality, we we kind of didn't. Uh, and my, my gut feeling is, I might be totally wrong, right? My gut feeling is that. Um, Arrow Bullet must have had must have had a word with, with uh, you know the powers to be at the club, and they must have, they must have said there's a certain budget available. Yeah. My, my, my guess is, you know, we thought we were in, we were going to spend a couple of mil on bringing the uh, uh, you know the big man back up front, right? Yeah. And, then, and then it didn't happen, and so then we had a couple of mil to play with, and we spent it anyway, but we couldn't get a striker, so we spent a couple of million on, on Turnbull, who's a decent player, but he's not a striker. Yeah. Right, so we brought him in over a couple of million. He's basically a number ten, really. Then you got Ruben, and then you got the return of Aaron Ramsey. You know, yeah. So it becomes kind of a you know, where, as, how do how do we how do we uh, manage that one? I wonder. Yeah, and for me, I think it. Um, what I've seen of um, is it Henderson? We got like from his name now from Celtic. Not Henderson. Turnbull. Turnbull. Turnbull sorry, why yeah, am I thinking yeah. Henderson? Yeah. I don't think he's settled yet. He hasn't found his way into this no, team. No, either. To be honest, the only thing I can recall of all his appearances so far, he had a cracking shot in the last home game that was a, a good did. save against Ipswich. Um, other than that, I think he's been fairly anonymous for us. Um, and there's no doubt that Rubin has more impact than him. Um, and he's playing in the position where I think he would get the best out of Rubin as well. Um, I think part of the problem he has at the moment is what he's brought on He's, he's put out on the left wing or the right wing. He's not getting that role where playing that number 10, where I think you will get the best from him. Um, and at the moment, it looks like Turnbull is, is blocking that. But surely um, you'd get a bit more if you if you mixed it up with uh, Rubin and, and Aaron Ramsey playing there. Now Aaron's back. Give him a, you know, start with one and replace with the other during the game and give it a go. Yeah. We have to try something different to get more creative than we are. Yeah, we do. I mean, that's the other thing I said to, to, to David and the response is that with Errol Bullock, what are your thoughts on Errol Bullock? Maybe we'll go around on that in a second. Um, I'm just going to go to Errol Bullock in a second, but Jeff Dela Cruz, not like, not like Jeff Dela Cruz to be controversial. <laughs> um, Cardiff City management are invariably not motivated enough to blood our youngsters, going back to what David said. Uh, they want the, what it says on the tin loan players, uh, the lazy and bullet in his team have followed this sad tra tradition. Um, Steve, do you want to respond to that? Yeah, I think um, I think whilst I agree entirely what Nig Nigel just said about the need to uh, get Ruben Colwell more games, I suspect that Errol will want to get as many points on the board between now and the end of the season. And and to pick up on Jeff's point there as well, um, I think he feels the safer option is, is to use the what it says on the tin loan players, as he, as, 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 as Je Jeff indicates there. And I, I don't think we will say, I'd like, I agree entirely with what I said, I say, but I don't think we'll see it. I think we'll see Ruben playing a cameo role again. Uh, and and, and it, it just won't happen. Um, I think no. yeah, if we've got effectively, if, if, if we're definitely not going up, we're definitely not going down. Let's, let's try out some players. Let's have a look. But then of course, to be fair to Errol, it's going to be better from his point of view. If, if, he's, if he's looking at, enhancing his CV to move on somewhere else, he's going to want as many points as possible on the board. So he can say, look, this is where I finished Cardiff City that season, rather than look into next season. If if now we can finally make a decision as to is Errol going to stay next season, then, yeah. then I think that might affect his mindset. He may want to have a look at some of the fringe players. He may want to have a look at some of the players who don't play so much. But until that's sorted, I don't think we're really going to, going to know where we are. Okay. I think you're right, Steve. I agree with you. But don't you think they'll get more points and more goals if they're playing Ruben instead of either Josh Bowler or Turnbull. And yes, and I'm playing devil's... I, I, I agree, Nigel, but just playing devil's yes. advocate at the moment, I think he feels that stopping the other team scoring is more important yeah. than us scoring. Yeah. David, do you want to come on on that one? Because uh, just to say, David, if you want to come in on that one, and then I'll follow it up by asking you about covering the Swansea match. <laughs> uh, we're not hearing you at the moment, David. Sorry, and you're not getting any audio from you. You're on mute, Dave. No. 
No, there's a mic. There's a mic yeah. issue. I think he's lost for words. <laughs> yeah, sorry, David. I think um, your uh, setup needs a little bit of uh, the old Azure Father. So uh, look, look, we'll 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 come away from you at the moment. Gentlemen, hopefully, you, you can hear us. We're not we're not hearing the audio at the moment. I don't think you are muted. I think it's, there's some, something else um, going on there. So Steve, talking about the, the youngsters as well. Yeah. Um, hopefully we get David on in a sec. Um, Isaac Davis, right? So Isaac Davis, going back to th uh, what the point was made earlier about how I think it might have been you when, when you looked so looked really good in that position up front, you know, in the cup match, which we, we could have won that match, but we probably should have done actually. Yeah. Second time, you know, we, we should have done Leeds. Yeah. Um, but Isaac Davis there was kind of playing. Um, you know, the one thing Isaac Davis brings to the table. He brings other things, but the one thing he definitely brings is something we don't have, and that is pace. Absolutely. You know, so, yeah, so if he's playing up front off the off yeah. the last defender, yeah. uh, I wonder with, with the way that Errol Bullet sets up, you know, where would Isaac fit into that team? I'm not. I'm not sure he would at the moment, unless you stick him in instead of a player like Josh Bowler, who's on loan. He's unlikely to be here next season. Um, he. Um, he, he played much better last season against better teams, notably, as I say, the, the Leeds, Leeds game. Because if a team's trying to play out from the back, he's very good at, at hassling. And again, as I said, I remember him coming on as a sub uh, when we were 1-0 down against Huddersfield. Goodness, it might be two or three seasons ago now. He came on, he got us a corner for the first goal, and then he put in that perfect cross for Kiefer, Kiefer yeah. to head in, and we ended up beat, beating them 2-1. So, again, it's all very well having the man in the middle. Going back to Yeju, the point we made previously, we don't know how good a striker he is because he's not actually getting any service into the box. And Isaac Davis is the type of player who could provide that. But, again, to pick up what you said, if, if he were to just use him as an inverted winger, as he's using, as Errol's currently using both uh, Josh Bowler and Carl and Grant, he's not, he's not really going to be able to function in that because he's What's a different sort of player. So we would have yeah. to change the way we're, we're, the system we're playing in, I think. Uh, David? Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. yeah sorry about that. Um, it's all right used to this particular software. Uh, but going back to the point Steve made early on about not conceding the goal, Hell Bullets seems to approach games not wanting to lose yeah. rather than win. Now, most of the time, I I would be quite happy with that. Anyone who's seen me play football would definitely uh, <laughs> appreciate appreciate uh, my, my support of that. But there does come a point where you think, you know, how, how much longer can we keep it tight and keep playing these you know, the solid midfield place. I mean, he says to Colwell about, oh, you need to do more on the defensive side of the game. But does he say to Wintle, you need to do more on the offensive side of the game? Hmm. Uh, and, and when Steve talked about, um, you know, it doesn't matter who we have in the, in the box, that's, that was my point early on. We, we, we just, we're just not creating chances. I think the, the transfer window goal was to buy Kiefer Moore. And yeah. when that failed, we didn't have a plan B. Um, so, you know, we just got a random selection of players. To be honest, I struggle to remember some of their names. Turnbull's done okay, but no one else has caught the eye. Even, you know, Ollie Tanner scored one goal in the early on this season and nothing else. Bowler, meh. You know, there's so much that's just not delivering. But this is why they're playing in the Championship for Cardiff City. You, even Grant, who Bullet seems to like, you know, he, he, he's. He just doesn't fill me with. He's not a flair player, I don't think. You know, hard working, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm -hmm. I think he's another one, though, David. I would say um, that he's, he's recently. It's happened in a couple of games. He's looked so much better, either on the right or in the centre, but on the left, just kind of he just, you know, it's just he can't. He, he basically doesn't have that foot. You know, how can he? How can he create? Who oh, Grant? Yeah, and uh, equally, Bowler on the other side. You know, Bowler yeah. just does, doesn't doesn't own a right foot. You know, you you, yeah. you think Bowler's going to do something? He'll go past a defender, I and mean, we scored one cracking goal the other week. Oh, we, yeah, he's got that one great goal, didn't he? Yeah, with the, the, the new, with, yeah. Uh, mm. our new Senegalese centre forward. Um, you know, swept home a lovely cross from Bowler. I thought, oh, here we go, but th 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 these are few and far between. Yeah, and what what's your thoughts? I suppose you can't. I just want to, David. It's unfair to ask you, really. What's your thoughts on JGU so far? You know, I suppose we just don't know what he's like because he's just not getting any service. Is that fair to say? 
Well, he came on in one game, and I thought, yeah, he looks the business. He's you know he's big and he's he's a tiger man. And he's holding up, laid off. But we just seem to rotate between two or three different centre forwards. Yeah, and it is never any. You know, maybe in the last eight games we might get a bit of consistency, but we're also talking about blood and youngsters. So, um, I don't know. It's almost as if we don't know what we want, and and the club okay. don't know what they want. You know, I I suppose if you'd said to me at the start of the season you'll finish in the top ten and above Swansea City, I, I would have taken that. In, Probably, in, yeah. You know, uh, given the last five years or so, particularly if you throw in a a victory over Swansea and a double over Bristol City as well. I know that doesn't define our season, but it's always nice. Um, so, you know, and if there's money available in the transfer window again, if Bullet stays, it's, it's just always Yeah, it's if, all if and if, bets, if, isn't it? It's always if we can't have City. You ifs know? and bullets. Ifs and bullets, very <laughs> good. I'll, I'll use that, Stephen. <laughs> 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 David, I've got, David, I want to ask you while you're on. Um, just it's an interesting one because obviously you know you're you're an, uh, an author and you're a journalist and um, I mean I, I I famously in my in my world famously covered the that Leeds United game in the cup um, you know when, that night yeah and I was covering it for Leeds Club Call funny enough but uh -huh. in you in your case when you when you went down you know to down the road to the Liberty. And you, you know you are obviously you're on the Cardiff City phone in, so I'm guessing you're a Cardiff City supporter. Uh, but you've got to be kind of, to some extent, diplomatic, I suppose, and, and neutral and objective. Um, what were what were your thoughts? Um, how was it for you personally? I suppose to kind of uh, uh, digest that day. It it was pouring with rain, and I couldn't find the car park, and I thought I can hardly ask for directions with an accent like this. <laughs> so I just had to sort of. Make well. I went to I went to the actual ground. I said, "Look, I don't know where to park. You know, can I go in here? Oh no, such and such a cab. I can go over there, turn around. In the end, I did find it. And I thought, oh yes, I have parked it before. Um, I've got to say, I'm always made very welcome in the in the press suite at Cardiff at Swansea City. The breakfast was to die for. A jack breakfast <laughs> with a bacon chop, a Cumberland sausage, egg, beans, tomato. It was absolutely wonderful, and um. I don't know if I, if any of you know uh, the broadcaster Mal Pope. I know Mal. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's on Radio Wales and he's done lots. It's a jack, of obviously. He's done lots of bits and pieces over the years on football. He's worked with Elton John. He's auditioned for Eurovision. He's a nice bloke, actually. He's a very he's a very yeah. nice bloke, and he's a big Swansea City fan. And he actually yeah. came and sat next to me during the entire course of the game, which you know made it quite a good laugh. He's keeping an eye on you, Dave. <laughs> yeah, he, 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 is, he is good fun. But um, one thing about working in a press box at these games, it does make you watch the opposition more because yeah. you're making a note of who oh, that left back is the place for Millwall or, or whatever. Um, he, you know, and that is the same if you're watching, you know, Cardiff Met or Wales versus Finland. Um, and he was pointing things out to me about about the um, the you know the Swansea players, and uh, he was interpreting some of the crowd chants from there. So what are they, what are they chanting? He said, "Oh, he bang, uh, jump don't up. tell us now. Don't tell us now. It's a family show." Uh, jump, no, jump up if you eat Cardiff because they would all bounce up and down. Oh, yeah. so, it's not exactly Lennon McCartney, is it? <laughs> but um, <laughs> so as an experience, you know, they always make me very welcome because they're all all the Swans players, fans and officials were all going mental to a man around me, particularly when that last goal went in. Uh, yeah. Behind me, though, was sat, it looked like the sort of North Korean cabinet, sat very gloomy, very stony-faced men in dark overcoats. And it was Steve Borley, uh, Ken Chu, a couple of other, a couple of others I recognised from the ground staff. And whilst everyone else was on their feet like it was New Year's Eve, they were sat there like it was, rem like it was Remembrance Sunday. Um, so I did, I did notice that. But um, what, I, what about David? Sorry, just what? What about when you saw the starting lineup and you saw he'd gone with the inverted wingers again, and you saw how well we played towards the end of that Ipswich game when we did kind of uh, shake it up a bit and try a few things, and we, to me it just looked fresh and we looked looked so much better. And it was back to the same old, same old. What What were your thoughts when you saw that? Well, before before the game started. You know, I was confident that this was our turn. Um, mm. But as, soon as there was a game in the Premier League a couple of years ago uh, that I wrote about, and it was Ipswich away. I think it was a three-all draw, quite late in the season. Um, 
And it was 25 minutes before we even felt as if we'd got out of the starting block. And it was yeah. like that against Swansea City. You know, yeah. they were they were everywhere. I wouldn't say it matters most of the, more to them, but I stumbled into the press conference after the game and I listened to uh, Errol Bullitt and then the Swansea manager, whose name sadly escapes me, and then they brought on... Um, Liam cool hand Cullen. Luke, I think it is. Sorry, Luke William. They, they brought on Luke Cullen then. Uh, no, Liam Cullen. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, he scored a, he's, he scored a goal, uh, which I think he scuffed, but they would all say he was a wonderful volley. He scored uh-huh. a goal, he, he, you know, missed a good header. And Mr. Penalty, so he had an eventful day. And he really, you know, joking aside, he was genuinely interesting in the way he talked about the match and the way the fans got behind him when he missed the penalty uh, and this sort of thing. But he did, he did say one story that the chef, the chef gave him, the club chef gave him a motivational speech before the game about this wow. old me. Was he the guy who made the Cumberland sausages? I wonder. Well, if he was, he was a good chef. But uh, you know, he, he gave a. Speech saying how much this means to the club and the fans, yeah. and all yeah. those twenty thousand out there, and um, somebody said, oh, "What's his favourite dish?" And I said, "Revenge." Um, ah. but, <laughs> but then this chef, apparently, and this is just a sort of hmm. amusing aside. This chef is obsessed with you know victory over Cardiff, and he puts a notice on his fridge door saying how many games to go to the derby and all that. Yeah. So I went quietly with Jason Perry, who I suppose I half know. And I said, not that they're obsessed with us, but the bloody chef has got a note telling you when the game is. So he said, yeah, it is, you know, we're the biggest game, we're we're their biggest game of the season. And I know we all say those kind of things after losing Swansea, but um, I do wish it would have been ours. But we, funny enough, I was watching some of the highlights uh, in in the gym when I, uh, earlier on today. And that incident with, um, is it, is it was it Miette who was shown the yellow card? Yeah, yeah. He, you know, he 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 pressed his nose on Darling's, you know, he pressed his forehead on Darling's nose, and Darling went down as if Mike Tyson had hit him. I thought, yeah, I thought, listen, if that man would have wanted to butt you, he would have butted you. You know, yeah, but it was yeah. so annoying, you know. I mean, but, but also. It, 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 it was incredibly stupid, though, David, for, 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 for him to do that because he could easily have been sent off. Absolutely. And in such a high-profile game as yeah. well, you mm. know, and, you, you know, maybe it's naive. You know you know, players are going to uh, make the most of it. And, and they took him off at half-time, you remember, because, and the Swansea mm. manager commented on that. They took him off at half-time because yeah. he's on a yellow card, walking a tightrope. He, I think he was fired up. Yep. Yeah, and he lost his head. We then had that rare glimpse of Ramsey and Colwell playing in the same team, which I think Steve mentioned earlier on there this evening. Yeah. Um, you, they were just streets ahead of the rest of our players. Ramsey, yes. see, Ramsey sees the pass before he gets the ball. So, yep. you know, you know he, he's got these photographs in his mind. And Colwell was pirouetting and turning and, yeah. and trying to create. And I, the only thing was, and it's the same as we keep saying, they didn't create chances. All the pressure, the pressure. We had mm. so much of the ball, but we never really put the goal. We, we almost did a Swansea on Swansea, didn't we? We uh, uh, Nudge, you know, we had like you know, we had, we had the possession. We did absolutely nothing, nothing with it. Like yeah. one shot on target or something ludicrously, stupidly low over over the course of the match. It was almost the reverse of the game that we had at Cardiff earlier this season, wasn't it? Where they were absolutely appalling, and we and we bossed it. Um, and deserve the win. They won the greatest game in the world, but they never are these games, are they? No. And it, you're right, Steve. It's just so disappointing because they play front foot football against Ipswich the previous week. Looks so good. And, and they're the team we've lost fewest games in the championship all season, and we yeah. deservedly beat them that day, even though it, you know, it take that took that late turn around to do it. And then they go to Swansea and do the exact opposite. And you think, you know, was it? You see, did the corner in the first fifteen seconds, four corners in the first five minutes. They couldn't pass. Um, there was no pace in them. So even if they tried to get forward, there was there were no runners. There was it was yeah. just um, you know, it, I was just hoping that they could have hung on until they did bring on the subs in the second half or, or a half time. Yeah. But you could see it was with that eleven they put out, it was only ever going to be one way traffic. So, and unfortunately, so, we did we did crack before the interval, and that was it. Yeah, and I, I, mean, think I mentioned before, I think the the Swansea Cardiff game. It's mm. now been fourteen, fifteen years since the team that scored the first goal didn't win the match. It's yeah. always on the first goal. 
Yeah, and if and if we if we if we we never look like it, mind. But if we had managed somehow or other, I don't know, a free kick corner or something, got got the first goal, yeah. and the pressure the Swansea uh, were under, and how massive that match is to them, I think you know it 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 could it could it could have been a different game. I was I was really disappointed, Nigel. And I'll, I'll ask you. I know you kind of alluded to it there. I was really disappointed um, when I saw that starting lineup. Yeah. And, yeah. Because, yeah. You know, if I was, if I was, you know, I'm, um, you know, uh, if I was managing a club, I suppose, and I wondered with Errol Bullet whether it's a case of um, like pride, I suppose, and professional pride. You know, this is the way I play. This is the way it is. But that la- the game against Ipswich, when we changed around, and we ended up with yeah. down down the left and a, a kind of Grant and, and and Colwell, all of a sudden, we look great. We look we look threatening. Yeah. We look, yeah. we look like a team who could score goals, you know? And then we go mm. away to our biggest rivals and we just turn around and go back to the same old, same old again. I, I just... uh, yeah, absolutely, Steve. I, and I don't mean to get on his case, but you just knew that Josh Bowler is not a man for that for the derby like that. You know, he's no. he's not somebody who gets stuck in and puts himself about. And he was anonymous as he's probably been far too often this season. And yeah, you just, you know, I would have had Cole on from the start or Odauda like you, you know, you, you had to have players who were able to take the game a bit to Swansea and take Cardiff at field. And, and all you had were, uh, it just looked like 11 holding players. And although Mate lost his head and was frustrated, mm. he was so isolated. It was unbelievable, you know, and you could have had Mbappe playing up front, front for the sub Swansea. He wouldn't have done anything because there's, there's just no service, you know, and that, and that is the problem. So, so with Errol Bullet. Um, you know, here we are now. Come, uh, Dave is the sharp guy. He'll work it out. I don't know, six, seven weeks or something like that from the from the, whole, the end of the whole shooting match. You know, we still don't know. We still don't know uh, with Bullet. You know, we still don't know whether he's staying, whether he's going. We still don't know about a contract. Um, you know, we got the summer the summer transfer window is going to be huge, uh, Steve, isn't it? The yeah. summer summer transfer window is going to be huge. Um, is he prepared to change his kind of tactics? Is he prepared to vary things? Um, it's a massive, massive summer for us, I think, uh, and a massive decision with Errol Bullet. Um, but we, I, I don't think we want to jump into and bring Jeff in again in a second to comment about this. But um, you know, we, we don't want to kind of just jump into let's get another new boss and go again. But if we got someone like Errol Bullet, um, and he sets up, let's face it, he sets up not to lose, right? That's what he does. He's very defensively minded. Yeah. If we're going to kick on, it's getting pretty close now, isn't it, to making some sort of decision? It is. We, we've got to make a decision about Errol, and we've got to make a decision quickly because he, he's going to be looking. At, he should be looking at players now. He should he should be looking to next season. But can I just come back to points made about the Ipswich game there? I don't think it was just the second half when with, with, with Ruben. And um, oh, we played throughout well, throughout. Yeah, yeah I mean, we, we started really well. We had the fant- great shot by Turnbull, the goalkeeper turned behind. We had an- another one that, um, uh, when the uh, the shot came in and uh, Perry NG almost got on, it, yeah. Um, it, it which scored a good goal, and we kept going. And we, we brought O'Dowder on, O'Dowder was fantastic down the left. When he came on against Swansea, he it was like the previous season. He was playing left back the whole time. He's yeah, yeah. We need there. you need him up the you need, you need him up the pitch. Um, yeah. uh, yeah, to David... the question, sorry, to answer the question. Yeah, um, that, that Jess put on there. Yeah, we, we need to make yeah. a decision. I mean, the, the, the this show after the Ipswich game, I think it was unanimous about giving Errol a new contract. Now we've had the Swansea game where we seem to take it was one step forward, two steps back, big time. Um, after that game, um, if, if he sets up and he, he takes the game like he did take the game to Ipswich, I'd be 100% in favour. But yeah. it's just, just the lack of consistency. But we do need to make a decision one way or the other. Let's either give Errol the contract or say we're not going to give Errol the contract. We're just going to see the season now. At least then we know where we are at the moment. It's, it's just the uncertainty for everybody, particularly, particularly us as, as the supporters. Well, let's whiz around on this one. So, David, I'll come to you next. I don't even see Jeff's comment on the screen, but he's, he's to him... He, he wants he wants bullet gone and he thinks you know if bullets there he's spending money he'd be stuck in with this this inverted kind of uh you know attack uh, well not even it's, it's an inverted defensive uh, formation rather than attacking formation but if there's no service coming in from other it's just let's not lose is it time you know what, what what's your gen, what's your general thoughts on on our bullet david well as i mentioned earlier he's he looks likely to give us our best season 
for some considerable time. The football hasn't been great, but it's a it's a mild improvement on the likes of I don't know Neil Harris, etc. So Ian Walsh, the uh, Radio Wales pundit, he he says that Cardiff City just go, you know, stop go, stop go. You he's a former Jack man, just to say. He's a former Jack. He's a former Cardiff City player as well. Yeah, I know, kind um, kind of. <laughs> but um, he, he didn't <laughs> tear up any trees for, uh, for pull up any trees for Cardiff City. But um, you know, I mean, we've had I did. Since Oli Gunnar Solskjaer, let's call that 10 years ago, we've had, I don't know, half a dozen different managers, if you include care, caretakers yeah. and, and, and everything yeah. else. And that's just not great for continuity. But Bullard himself has said, well, I'm not planning for next season because, I, as you say, I, I, I don't know if I'm going to be here. And if, if they did decide not to renew his contract, on what grounds? Because you know, you've only finished 10th. And... Um, and who do we get in, in place? You know, we might, you know, all have hopes of, I don't know, Craig Bellamy and Mark Hughes and maybe Nathan Cooper. Jones. Yeah. yeah no, he's just gone to Charlton, is he, Jones? Um, yeah. Maybe Cooper at Forest might be a show. But other than that, you just know we'll get some, hmm. you know, I don't know, East European guy we've never heard of. And um, Well, we had we'll, Sabri Lamucci, didn't yeah. we? You know. Yeah. Uh, we had, we had Sabri Lamucci, and um, yeah. I thought I thought we'd probably be sticking with him. And then he, he was a Gary Garner, and we didn't hear anything. I get Gary Garner from a teenage daughter, by the way, just to say. But mm -hmm. I mean, it could be the same with Errol Bullet. You know, we're not we're not here we're not hearing we're not hearing anything. No, and I'm not sure if if uh, Han knows what he wants or is interested in what he might want. Um, in a sense that. That run of four wins almost might sort of, um, you know, come back to bite us on the wasp name because that that gave us that dreaded thing of hope, um, which is terrible for a football fan. It's the hope that kills you, they say, don't they? Because all of a sudden, a Cardiff City fan, yeah, yeah, absolutely. All of a sudden, we're thinking, hang on, hang on, you yeah, know, you're looking at, you know, if if again, if 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 we win the next game and a half, but um. Mm. You know, now is the time to either. Well, I I would say do nothing. I would stick with Bullet and say, right, you okay. are in for next season. You've got yep. something to plan with. There's a small amount of budget, you, you know, and at least the club as a whole, including fans, can move forward with some sort of stability. But all this limping through every season from manager to manager. And hmm. If you looked at our team lineup from. I don't know, even three years ago, there's probably very few names that were featured in the lineup. Joe Rawls, and after that, yeah, yes, maybe some of the youngsters, Colwell would have been on the fringes, but after that, you know, yeah. um, you're struggling. So stability is what this club needs, but unfortunately, manage, you know, owners and chairmen, chairmen don't like the want stability, they want it now, you know, it's... Uh, it's like the Chancellor, you know, what is it? Jam the model from managing the jam today or something? Yeah. yeah. Um, well, uh, Nigel, I'll bring you in on, on the on the arrow yeah. bullet one because the comment on the screen there from Andrew Davis, uh, bullet's downfall. He's not an attacking manager. He's too negative. Uh, he's not for me next season. Mm -hmm. Some of our football's been dire this season. I'd really like, you know, I, 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 like I said, going back to what I said earlier, I'd like to think that he sees, he tries something, it kind of works. You can see how he might score mm -hmm. goals and kick on, then goes with it. But I just don't get that good feeling with him. He's the kind of guy to, to, to do that. What are your thoughts on Bullet? Yeah, it's mixed, isn't he? He's a bit of a conundrum because uh, I think part of the problem was we started the season really well. And, um, you know, people were thinking we had a playoff team when we beat Bristol the end of October. Realistically, that squad is not. And, yeah, he's not an attacking manager. He's the sort of safety first one. But he's also got a squad that hasn't got a striker. Um, and, and we do know that he did try to sign top line strikers last summer. I can't remember the um, who was the guy he went. He ended up in France and he, he did his ACL, didn't he? The first couple of games, and then he tried to get Kiefer in the last window. So he is out on them looking in the market for a talented striker. But I suppose what were our expectations for this season? For me, I wanted to see us do better at home. And although we had a, a horrible run in the autumn. This is actually going to be our best home season for about four or five seasons. Um, I wanted to see us nowhere near the relegation 
positions. Yeah. We're not. We're mid table. Yeah. I wanted to just do well in the derbies, and although the Swansea thing was a, a shambles the other week, we won three out of four this season, and and we lost seven of the last eight in the in the previous two seasons. So there are you know we we overlook the things that are going well because the football at times has not been great, and it has been joyless. And there were periods in the winter where it was it was you know well, almost dying. We would just get lucky late away wins at places like well, Sheffield yeah. Wednesday and QPR that kept yeah. us going, didn't they? Um, I mean, the so, games we won, we weren't great in either, Nigel. No, we? absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. but I think overall, I think he's done a decent job. I, I don't know if he wants to be here or not. That's that's the one question I've got. Does he no. want to stay? Um, but then you also get, you know, who is making these decisions to give all these players new contracts? We've now got a new um, head, head scout, haven't we, from Ukraine? I'm assuming that's someone that Bullets had a say in. So, why yeah. are we? You know, we're handing out contracts left, left, right, and centre to everyone, and making signings behind the scenes. And yet, the manager is the one thing that they're they're not doing anything about. And I think they they have to sort it out. And personally, I think I would give him a roll of, another roll of the dice because I think he's then. Although I don't enjoy his football always and the way he sets up, and and sometimes he doesn't seem to learn from his mistakes. But you like to think that's partly part of the adjustment to the championship, having not managed in this country before. Yeah. Um, but I think he's a good man uh, and he's, he's open and honest, isn't he? And sometimes that's all, you know, you can respect that. But yeah, yeah. yeah. He's also very, want... very predictable. Yeah, he is. Um, I but I, yeah, I would like yeah. to see better football in the last yeah. few weeks of the season to give us something to really yeah. encourage us for next season. And if he can do that, then great. I, I would be in favour of giving him a contract. But I do, you can't keep it stringing it along. We, can, we can't go into another semi thinking who's going to be our manager because they need to do the groundwork now for next season. Yeah, I mean, because we we got we got like seven minutes to go. So I mean, there's quite a few comments coming in. So there was a good one just now. Um, Wales KTF 1969. I think I know who that is. Uh, uh, he says an East European manager we never heard of. Is it Borat? But uh, <laughs> <laughs> a, <laughs> good comments knocking around. Uh, how about this one? Uh, I'll go to you, Steve, with this first, and then it was around. David already mentioned this. And it comes up a fair bit. Same person actually. I'd move heaven and earth to get Steve Cooper here for next season. But would he come? No, I don't want Steve Cooper. I don't want his assistant. <laughs> so you? Oh yeah, that's what you mean. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah he would. He probably. Yeah. It, 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 I mean, that's a good point, David. Is it? I don't think his assistant would want to come, mind Steve. <laughs> no, no. no. Uh, okay, can I just go, go go back as well? I think to pick up on Nigel's point earlier on. Uh, obviously, everything was very positive after Ipswich. And and we've taken the game to them. We've beaten one of the best teams in the league this season. They've only lost. It was only the fifth time they'd lost all season when we beat them. Um, yeah. There have been some highlights this season. The four 0 win at Huddersfield, followed by the yeah. the two 0 home win against Bristol, when Ruben scored probably the best the, the goal of the season when he somehow got through those two Bristol defenders and s smacked the ball in. Um, again, the last the added time against uh, Ipswich reminded me of why I, I do all those miles on the road during the season. Um, I think also I, I'd um, I'd I'd also I'd, I'd agree with what Michael Hoops is saying there as well. He well, it has has brought some talent in. He Gutas and um, Siopis, yeah. I think generally speaking, that they, they they've been a success. Um, again, going back to the autumn period, we were going re really well at home, weren't we? And then and then we we ended up snatching defeat from the jaws of victory at home to Norwich when we were two one up. Ended up. Yeah. 3-2 three, three, to them. There have been a number of games this season. I know, as, as David said earlier on, it, it's a lot of ifs, buts and maybes. But uh, earlier on the season, we gave Ipswich a really good game. We gave Leeds a really good game. And of course, and then, of course, there was the... Um, there were a, num a number of games this season where we could have got more. But Le Leicester, we were only only lost up there to a... Um, Ipswich a, away. A, a, yeah. a, a, a last game. Ipswich, we were 2 0 up and in control of the game for the first hour. They had a couple of lucky ricochets and one really good goal to, to beat us. So, think I think yes, we are we are constantly the, the, the football has been dire on occasions. I'll accept that, but there have been a number of positive moments this season that we've not really enjoyed. And I mentioned earlier on a previous show that it's it's, it's refreshing to have had the same manager for the whole season for the first time since I think 2018 19. Now, um, I'd like to have. A summer where we have the same manager as the previous season going into the next season. Yeah. Okay. And just just before I come to David on that, so Steve, what, how just very briefly, how how long would you be talking about? Are you talking about a, maybe a year with with an option? 
Yeah, I'd, 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 I'd put him on a year's roll in. Yeah. And then, then if, if things don't go well next season, they can then make, make that change in order to get somebody in to keep us in the division again. But I would hope that if he's backed to a reasonable level, given the, the financial fair play position, um, he could then build on what he's done already. I, I would, I would, I would go with Nigel. I would, I would give him another year. And the, the only thing I'd say there, so yeah. just very briefly on that, Steve, is I know one of the concerns he has. He's not brought his family over because he's only got a one-year contract. He's got young children. Now. I think they're still in Germany. So I don't think a year's contract he will take. I don't think he would take that because it just leaves him in that period of uncertainty. He needs to have a longer deal for the family purposes as well. And there, there is family side of football as well. And I think that will be a problem soon if it's only 12 months. That's a good point, Nigel. I hadn't thought of that. Um, uh, David, I don't know if you can see the comment from Jeff on the screen there. Leeds United, you're talking about Norwich. Leeds United went through a huge amount of uh, managers, careful how you pronounce it, Steve, prior to Farker. Uh, they've left. They've got it right. We we can do the same. What you Farker money to spend, yeah. yeah. I think if you, if you look at Far Farker as well, his first season at Norwich, he didn't do very well. It was the season we went up, and it was it was Farker's first season, and and we beat Norwich uh, uh, up there. Uh, two 0 with the goals from uh, um, Kenza Hoar and then Junior Hoylet right at the end. And I remember thinking that's the worst Norwich team that, that I'd seen for okay. quite some time. They, they, they lost their best player in James Madison, and the following season they got promoted. So, so, so David, uh, again, there's a, a, um, a talking about those teams that we played. I mean, at the start of the season, I suppose we were a bit of an unknown quantity, even to ourselves. I think at that time, and Ramsey was looking amazing, wasn't he? We played those teams at the right time at the beginning, uh, before before the others uh, warmed up. Are, are we where we should be, David, or do you think we're capable of more? Um, well, as, as I said earlier, if you'd offered us this at the start of the season, I think we would definitely have taken it. Uh, as an aside, who's Steve Cooper's assistant? Have I missed something here? Mr. Tate. Tate. Oh, oh, I don't know. Yeah, mm. I see what you mean. Yeah, I wouldn't fancy him, no. I'd rather have that, Andrew than him. I, I, you know, Steve, Cooper's got, Steve, Cooper's, Steve, Steve Cooper's uh, got, got an appeal, but um, I, I go with Steve. I think I would try and keep... To, you know, to have the same manager during the closed season, going into the um, into the new setup, I, I I'd quite welcome that. And he hasn't, you know, he hasn't he hasn't pulled up any trees, but he hasn't done the opposite of whatever pulling up trees is either. You know, there's been a if we could get some sort of striker, come someone to create. You know, if Callum O'Dowda, it's all ifs as I would keep saying. If Callum O'Dowda was fit. For a season, we really missed him. It's been a, it's been a massive loss for us, that. Yeah, almost yeah. as big a loss as Ramsey. Um, yeah, uh, as uh, Garant Cole said, you know, we did, we did lose Ramsey, no doubt, for a big bulk of the season. Yeah. Um, we got to talk about two things quickly before the before the end of the show. Um, so tomorrow there's there's a bit of a match going on at the Carlos City Stadium, a little little bit of a you know an important game. Uh, so maybe we can talk about that very briefly. Are you covering the game tomorrow, David? Yes, I'm in the press box tomorrow. Cool. Okay. So um, I, I want to ask you, I'll ask you, start off with you, and I was on a good Steve, and I got an edge. Um, so we got uh, Wales, Poland tomorrow. Um, prediction for that. And also then when we have Sunderland, Sunderland on Friday, two very match, two very different matches in the same stadium and very different things on the table for both, really. Uh, Sunderland, two all draw. Uh, tomorrow, um, people were saying to me, what was the atmosphere like uh, last week? And I said, well, it wasn't as intense as I have seen it, because in the past, we've had to roar the team over the line, or the crowd have had to roar the team over the line. But that wasn't needed last week. It was relatively relaxed. Um, and, you know, never in any doubt, really, apart from that late goal. Uh, I think it's going to be slightly different tomorrow, but I think we've got so much strength in depth. Instead of relying on a bail or a gigs or a rush, we've got really good players all over the pitch and on the bench. And I think uh, Wales will win. I maybe one nil. Okay, um, Steve, come to you. Okay, I will go for a two nil win tomorrow night with the crowd uh, being more intense, as, as David indicates there. I'd go for a two-one home win against Sunderland, and not forgetting that that we got to Easter Monday away at Coventry. I'd go for a two-one win there as well because they're going to get a bit jittery now as we get towards the end of the season, and their eyes are going to be on their FA Cup semi-final against Manchester City. 
<laughs> okay. And the, uh, and the only two Matt, Polish players... Uh, United. Uh, Matt, Matty Cash plays for Poland. Is that right? I think, I think that's right. Yeah, yeah. he's out tomorrow. Yeah. Pull the yeah. hamstring. And then you got Lewandowski, who's he's, he's yeah. 34, 35, but he's... He is, no, he's 36 this summer. Yeah. yeah. But he's, he's, you know, he's just his pedigree. Is, it it yeah. says it all. Um, Nigel, what's your thoughts tomorrow? I think it's going to be tight. It might even need extra time. And I think so. Don't help us. It may be penalties, but I said I don't think we, I, penalties. Yeah, I don't think we got anything to fear. If you look at Poland in the group, they lost three of the last three of the four away games they had, and the only one they won was in the Faroe Islands. They're not playing great football at the moment. Although yeah, I did see Wales only beaten once, which was the first meeting fifty years ago, and the last nine meetings we've lost seven, drawn two, including the two I games in the. Uh, in the Nations League recently. <laughs> <laughs> I was there the 2-0. <laughs> I remember Trevor, that one. Trevor Hockey score. And yes. Games, I think. Yeah, I think you're right. So, um, But yeah, when you look at their team, I don't think there's too many players that would worry you, should worry. Yes, and uh, we've been talking about Cardiff playing this, you know, not playing front foot football. That's the one thing that Wales will do. Um, mm. Maybe they need to start with Kiefer. I wasn't overly convinced by Brennan playing centre-half. Uh, set no, forward no, the other night, no, no. but I think Kiefer will give him more problems. So uh, I, I would like to see that change. Um, but yeah, I think it, we will win. I do think we'll win, but it's going to be a nail biter weekend. Um, it's fact, the city games on Friday, isn't it? I only realised yeah, that yesterday. Yeah. yeah. Um, I do think they're going to win two nil or two one. Sunderland are in dire form. They've taken one point from the last seven, and that was a nil nil draw with QPR last match. So. Um, they're not they're they're not playing well at the moment, and hopefully we can keep it that way. Okay, and they are actually five points behind us. You know, they are very yeah. much on the table side. Um, we're, we're right towards the end here, David. But I just wanted to ask you: you you've obviously been having a conversation with the the guy who's involved with the, the fan base at Sunderland. I imagine in the conversation you've had, yeah. I wonder yeah. how he feels about the game, and what you know, what's he predicting? Uh, I haven't got that from him yet. He's just reached out to me to ask for him for his predictions. But last time uh, I did this, when we were away, mm. I put in my uh, views, and he put a very he put a very Sunderland emphasis on my response. Um, so uh, I'll be interested to see that. But um, it'll be interesting to see how many how many Sunderland bring as well. Yeah. It's going to be a relatively meaningless game, but it's a bank holiday. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they could bring. You know, they, I'm sure they'll sell their good allergy. Good support. Uh, yeah. Good support. Yeah. Okay, well, well, we we haven't got time now to talk about that time. Do battle them four one after they won the FA Cup? Was that right years ago? I think that things that's, think that's yes, the case. Yeah. John Farringdon, I think. We'll John Farringdon hat trick. We we'll <laughs> leave that for next for next Monday. Yeah, you're right. Anyway, thanks a lot, guys. Good show. Let's hope yeah. Wales to do it tomorrow. Not uh, City. Also, Cheers, all. Come See on, ya. Yeah. Bye bye.